Hey! <laughs> She's excited. A co-worker. Yo, yo. See, the yo, yo, yo don't work for that, but I like it. Yeah, welcome back to episode... 19. 19, 19 of the Outside After Work podcast. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we added to our bio, we are the New Jersey podcast, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. That means number one. Listen, it's your interpretation, but just saying we're coming up, we coming for y'all, and... You know, we better take the number one spot. Absolutely. That's and the reason that we're going to do that is because y'all follow and like us and share us on all of our social media platforms. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Apple. We appreciate y'all so we much. We outside. We outside. Yeah. Shout out to our coworkers. Yes. Shout out to y'all coworkers. So um, because this is a solo episode with mm-hmm. just me and Aaron, we've had plenty of guests for the past few episodes, and we appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Shout and out to y'all. shout out to Zay, mm-hmm. Isaiah, for being on the last one. And we are wearing the same clothes because we are being productive mm-hmm. and giving y'all two episodes back-to-back of recording. And, yeah. So oh, I mean, I could take this off. I got other clothes. Yeah. You should have did that prior to us starting. Oh. The crazy thing is I got one of PJ shirts on underneath here too, you know. So represent. You shout him out all the time. That's which my is guy. Dope, That's my guy. Which is dope. Yeah. You know, so can I tell y'all this? My word for 2023 is support. Mm. Like support ain't just some buzzword. Like it's some real shit. Like if you supporting your friends, your family, your peoples, like this is how we get guests on our show. Mm-hmm. It's not just because somebody want to be on a podcast. It's because they support us. Yep. So, you know, that's what 2023 is all about. So support each other, love each other, and let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose of this podcast. Like mm-hmm. we literally have created and we're cultivating a platform for all of the entrepreneurs in Mm -hmm. New Jersey, the uh, content creators. If you want to just like come on and just like join the conversation, we provide that for Mm -hmm. you. So, And if you want to talk about what you need to talk about, because it's not just let's just shoot the shit because that's not what we're here for. We're here for y'all. We're here for substance. Absolutely. And one of the most substantive things is... Is that a word? Yes, it is. You know, you know my vocabulary. Substantive. Substantive. Yes, look that it up. That sound made up. Uh, okay, if it is made up, my apologies. But one of the <laughs> most substantive things that we do here is we check in on each other yes. because, as we talked about on episode seventeen, is you know friends check in. Like we want to make sure how we doing, how how our mentals are, how how the chicken is. You know, we want to make sure everything is right. So Dana, how's the chicken? Yeah, that's the money. The chicken's well done. <laughs> oh, that money, right, huh? <laughs> Listen, you know okay, the so let's let's check in though. Like, mm-hmm. um, for me, so it is the beginning of 2023, still, we're in January, and like something about this year feels right to me. Mm-hmm. So, one of my co workers, um, like a real co worker or like our co worker, my real life, <laughs> <laughs> my real life co worker, <laughs> like at work. We had like you know those coworkers where you have like little small talk mm-hmm. that was yeah, something that, you that don't like. I don't like at all but it's it's necessary when you're in a corporate like office environment like you have those conversations. So I have a coworker who like kind of sits in back of me and I'm big on energies. Like I'm one of those people who I can just like feel like what you're given and like what your aura is. Like mm-hmm. I think I'm like an empath in that way. So he just always has a very, like, the glass is half full and the glass is half empty point so of view. It's very pessimistic. It's pessimistic. It's, like, in the middle. What is that called? I don't remember. Okay. He's that. Anyway, so um, we were having, like, a little small talk conversation. He was like, he was like, yeah, it's 2023. And I'm coming in, like, oh, I'm, I'm excited for this mm-hmm. year. Like, it just feels right to me. Like, that's what I'm saying to him. And he's like... Yeah, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm like, it's going to go great. Like, I just have that feeling. And also for me, like, threes is my angel year. Mm -hmm. Do you know what angel numbers and angel years are? Okay. So. (laughs) So, um. Shout out to Blank Man, by the way. Thank you, Marvin. That's my favorite movie. Sorry. You like that movie? I love Blank Man. I hate that movie. It was 
are so Jake, speak corny. to me. It wasn't <clears throat> funny. Oh my god, yo! I hate that movie. Um, I'm currently looking for a new co-host of the. <sighs> let Wheel. me let me get back <laughs> to ahead, my point. Ahead. So, angel years mm-hmm. and angel numbers. Like my angel number has always been three. Mm-hmm. Like my birth- birthday is March third, three three, nineteen ninety four. Oh, I'm about to say ninety three. No, that would have been dope, but no. And then my brother's is 12. He's 12, mm-hmm. 12, 1991. So I feel like like our years and date of births have always been, like it meant something. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now um, I'm realizing what my purpose is in life and like really connecting to myself and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So just to give like a quick check-in, um, like I recently saw the new Avatar movie with Jasmine. Shout out to Jasmine and Anna. So Anna's my best friend. And after that, we had like a very like deep conversation, basically talking about like manifesting and how the power of the tongue really is is very impactful. So my thing is is like I never really knew like how like everyone knows what manifesting means right like speaking into existence and writing things down of what you want and then like putting the effort behind that to make it reality and bring Mm -hmm. it to fruition so for me like i've always felt connected to energies and stuff like that but i never really knew like how to manifest and the words to say so over these past two weeks i've been kind of just like learning how to really manifest and like things to speak into existence and how to say like things are your divine right and Mm -hmm. uh, things along those lines so i think that's just like what my focus has been and like with 2023 it just feels different like it feels like there's going to be a lot of like great changes in my life and i'm excited for it what about you um before we get into me do you do you see prayer as the same as manifestation Okay, so this is a great question because I've seen people say how nowadays a lot of people want to replace praying and Mm -hmm. God and Jesus with manifesting. Mm -hmm. To me, they both coincide. To me, it's the same thing. So you can manifest, but you can also pray for either yourself or your family members and also just like speak it aloud as well so Mm. to me i do both do you have like a journal or a daily planner or anything like that it's funny you mentioned that so Mm. that was one of the things that i just started like i i know that it's important to speak things into existence that you Mm -hmm. want but it's a whole different beast when you start writing things down Mm -hmm. and that's something that i just started learning like every morning what i do now is i take about five to ten minutes and just write probably like three to five sentences of what I want from the day. So things, for example, is like, I want to be open to to happiness, to joy. It's not always like a physical thing, like, mm-hmm. oh, I want more money. Like, no, it's more so like deeper to me. And it's like, well, why, why am I always asking for like physical things? Mm-hmm. Like, let me just ask for like more gratefulness and like being in the present moment more and, and not being ungrateful for like being in this, point in time like mm-hmm. right now so those are the things that i've been like manifesting and writing down and what's dope about that is i'm actually writing a self-help book um called winning a day um it's oh. about sports by the way <laughs> is it um but it coincides with literally everything that you're saying mm-hmm. and the craziest part is i even though as a writer i suck at writing things down mm-hmm. like because i'm always on a go unless it's like poetry or if it's something for like a novel that i'm working on or anything like that so um i think i'm going to take some of your guidance on this and i'm definitely going to just start writing a lot okay. of things down like yeah, no. nashima tells me that all the time is just you know write things down mm-hmm. and just especially if things affect me mm-hmm. um, whether it's work or whether it's home just write it down um one of the things just to add to that um that i do as well is like once you write things down And it's funny because I just taught my grandma how to do this. Like, in the last episode, I mentioned how, like, I'm really close to her. And she's always been, like, a very, like, strong force in my life and a strong, like, motivator. Her and my aunt, like, they've always been, like, my cheerleaders to just, like, keep going and, Mm -hmm. like, pursuing things that I want to do. So my grandma, like, she does have a lot of regret in her life because she wasn't able to complete a lot of her life endeavors because she was that caregiver kind mm-hmm. of person she literally would give like her last to her siblings and now i wouldn't say it was it's a burden but whenever i check in with her 
I'm always that person that she confides in. And like from a 70, I think she's 74 now. But talking to someone that has like a 74 mindset who's lived an entire life and you being that person that they confide in, like mm-hmm. that's a heavy burden to carry. And I don't, I don't like hang up the phone and be like, I got to go because like she doesn't have friends and stuff like that. So I'm kind of like, I'm honored that she feels that close to me that she can like tell me a lot of, a lot of the stuff. But at the same time, it's like for my mental health, mm-hmm. I got to like put some type of barriers in place. But to circle back to the manifesting thing, like I told them how I've been like writing things down and like stuff that I just want from the day. And she's like, well, let me try that. Like, let me try to use that as an outlet and like write um, things that come to mind in the morning to her parents who passed away at this point. But things that she's like, she kind of like keeps with her Mm -hmm. and she wants to just release. And I told her, I was like, at the end of whatever you say, just make sure you end it with like something positive or something that you want to be grateful for from the experiences with your parents. And she was like, I'm going to do that. And then I was like, make sure, like, after you write it down, you say it, like, you speak it. Because we just said the power of the tongue. Like, it it really, you know, is powerful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's one of the things. She was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to do that. And I was like, well, let me know on Friday or Thursday of this week, like, how you feel at the end of the week. And she's actually told me that she feels, like, much lighter and she feels more at peace. And I'm like, we all should be doing this, Mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of the relationship I have with my grandfather. Mm. Um, I never realized like what a best friend really was until I realized like I can sit and listen, like I can really be taught something. Mm-hmm. And then on the flip side, I can do the same thing for him. Where you know this man is on pushing eighty years old, and he's listening to what I'm saying, and he's internalizing it, and he's actively trying to do it. So. You know, we have very similar parallels in terms of, like, who one of our closest, I don't want to say ancestors, that sounds crazy. It's not ancestors. Ancestors are, like, people who were dead, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the term is, but like this is our um, elders. Elders, okay, yeah. elders works. Um, but it's just like that connection to I just continue you, that. Yeah, I want to ask you. So um, that's actually something like I didn't know that. Like mm-hmm. that's something that we connect on. How do you? Does your grandfather do this though? Like he talks about the old days and stuff that he'd mm-hmm. been through in his life. Are there times where? He tells you things that you feel like you're not really equipped to yeah, like handle. When Jaden was born, that's where we really, really like, like finalized this friendship, mm-hmm. right? Because growing up, my grandfather was very stern, very masculine. Um, I would he borderline, didn't his borderline feelings. misogynistic, right? All mm-hmm. those typical things that you see from a, a, a hyper masculine figure. Mm-hmm. Um, it was no talking. And it was a different time. Right. Like that was how it was. So when I'm in college, you know, I was for the streets. Like, uh, call it what you want. Um, he just had to pull me aside. He was like, listen, I don't think this is the right decisions that you're making. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life, but I'm going to tell you what I think that you should hear. And in these moments, it's like, yeah, I hear you, but I'm going to still be out here. I'm still yeah. be doing all this reckless, wild shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Jaden was born and it was like, fuck, like if I would have just listened. I should have Right. Used and time. granted, he told me a lot more than just <laughs> he told me a lot more than just that. Yeah. But it was like that was the catalyst to really let me sit down mm-hmm. and stop being so vocal and start being a lot more of an observer. Um and then he ended up being diagnosed with cancer. Um, I believe right. he had stomach cancer or um, bladder cancer. I don't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened to coincide with the time I was unemployed. So I'm living at home and I'm taking care of him essentially. Um, anything that he needs, any doctor's appointments, like this is our bonding time. I don't know if I'm going to have moments left with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just got so close. And he just gave me so much life perspective like I believe I I am a turned person. Like mm-hmm. the type of person that I was before a lot of y'all got a chance to really know me. I was an asshole. I didn't give a fuck about nothing. Maturity was not on my radar. Mm-hmm. Like it was just things that the person that y'all see today, y'all would not believe I was. Um people who probably went to high school with me. I, I know Tania gave me a lot of praise. Um 
I was an asshole. I was a piece of shit. Mm. Like, and it's okay. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, but, accountability. You know? But that's what it takes sometimes is somebody to really rein you in and show you that you, you're better than what you think you are. Um, and a lot of the things I was going through, I know we had Isaiah on the show last week, but people don't see the things that I, I went through during those college years, mm -hmm. dealing with the child support like we talked about, dealing with my grandfather's cancer, my great grandmother passing away. Like I was going through a lot mm -hmm. at the same time. And it was just like, yo, I got support. And he was the first person like granted my mother was always like deep in my life. But our conversations wasn't the same as like my grandfather really sitting me down. Mm -hmm. And that was just so impactful. So shout out to grandparents. Shout out to grandparents and being <laughs> privileged enough to have Absolutely. grandparents alive. Because everybody you connect don't. with some people they mm -hmm. have grandparents who are still living and they don't make the time for them mm -hmm. so that's actually one of the things that like my grandma has she has confided in me a lot is she has six grandchildren and i think seven or eight great grandchildren mm -hmm. my grandmother my, and grandfather only have one grandchild that matters <laughs> okay okay same <laughs> But anyway, um, like she's very fortunate enough where she was able to meet her great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that like she has expressed to me is that her grandchildren, like my cousins that I'm close with and I grew up with that are more so like my siblings, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily check in. Mm -hmm. Not saying that they have to visit constantly because now she lives in Arizona and like them flights to Arizona is not cheap. But it's like she just she just wants a simple text like mm -hmm. she wants a simple like phone call and like just feel like she matters to mm -hmm. them because she did so much for them when they were growing up and when they were children so my thing is like you should definitely cherish the times that you have with your grandparents because like we're all not here for long mm -hmm. and especially someone who has lived a full life it's like take advantage of that and if you do have children make sure you you're able to like and make sh if mm -hmm. your grandparents aren't assholes too because that's a different conversation mm -hmm. even like, if they are honestly even if they are yeah. do your best to try um i don't i don't mean to cut you off but i actually see my grandfather today right mm -hmm. um he was on the phone with one of his favorite cousins so i i, I, I knew what it was but typically when i go home because obviously it's on a two-hour trip so i try to check in on him mm -hmm. my grandmother we talked for a good five ten minutes um, I went my Are you closest room. to your grandfather more than your I wouldn't grandma? say closer or to anyone. I just think the conversations differ. Okay. Um, when I went to my grandfather's room, he's on his his phone. I was just in the mirror, you know, just doing dumb shit. Just as I stole some candy, but then I smacked <laughs> his foot on the way out just to mm -hmm. let him know, like, hey, I recognize that you're on the phone. I don't want to be disrespectful. I see you when I see you, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I struggle when it comes to phone calls. Mm -hmm. They don't text. They're older, so. Would if, you wait? So you struggle like reaching out, like calling and yeah, just time? because I'm that's not a phone call person. That's just okay. not what I do. So my grandmother, when she texts in a group chat every once in a while, she'll just send this text, and then it's like, okay, I need it untexted. That's why everybody call my grandma. I need it untexted, and it's like, okay, but mm -hmm. my grandfather he don't do that. So it's like I gotta see him. Mm -hmm. Like you have to see him in person. Like I gotta, I okay. gotta make time, even if I'm in the house for five minutes. Like, you're going to get one of those five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, because that's how much you mean to me. And it's not, like I said, it's not a favorite thing or anything. But it's like, I've garnered respect that I didn't know existed. Because I was a very disrespectful child. On mm -hmm. purpose. Um, because the way that I value respect in humans is you only get a, a one-way street with respect with me. Mm -hmm. You're going to start at 100%. The moment you go down at ninety nine percent, you'll never get back to a hundred percent with me. Okay, I want to I want to get back to that, but I do just want to comment on mm -hmm. um, what you said about your grandfather. So I'm fortunate enough where my grandma, like she sends gifts, mm -hmm. like she will text. She don't like be texting with her fingers because she does have like arthritis and stuff like that. But she has her little um, the stylus. Stylist. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she has a stylus, and I bought her an iPad because like mm -hmm. you know it's a bigger screen and she plays a lot of games. She got the glasses but when she been holding like this and. Stuff. They're not that low, but she got glasses. Mm -hmm. But like, she still uses it to send text messages, and like, literally, will text to check in with all of my mm -hmm. grand, not grand, my fucking cousins. I'm like, <laughs> your grand cousins. <laughs> I ain't never heard of a fucking. Shut up, my cousins. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, so I'm fortunate enough that she's like that tech savvy where like we can communicate without having to constantly be on the phone. And like when it when I mentioned how when I'm on FaceTime, I'm very like focused. The reason is because of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Like she's one of those people where if you're not like focused on her like undivided attention on FaceTime she'll be quick to hang up like mm -hmm. oh I see you're busy I'll talk to you later and I'm like damn like I just had to pick up some from the floor so it's not that serious but because she's like that I give that attention to a lot of people as mm -hmm. well so that's my whole thing with um, FaceTime but um can I jump in on that real quick but okay. it's it's so important to see what the intent of that conversation was with your grandmother right because it's not I don't need to have an hour, three hour conversation with you. Mm -hmm. It's I'm literally just checking in on you, just seeing how you're doing. Like if you're it's busy, so you're busy. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of us need to learn that, myself included, where it's like, you know, I don't need to I actually learned this with Jaden. Um, it's his birthday today, so shout out to Jaden. Jaden's his um, son. He don't Jaden is the type of kid where he don't want to be on the phone with you. Mm-hmm. He don't want to text you. That's Generation right? Z? What is he? I don't know what he is. He it might start started, started back at A at this point. <laughs> um, but it's like give him the moment that he needs. And mm -hmm. that's that's good. That's, he's good with that. And I think a lot of us try to overcompensate for distance and being missed and all this kind of stuff. Where honestly, sometimes all you need is mm -hmm. two minutes of your time. I think that's one of the things that I have. I've realized this over the past couple of years, like spending a lot of time like in my um, my own space. But one of the things that a lot of people can't get past is tunnel vision for themselves, mm -hmm. like tunnel vision for their future, making money, their family. And that's all they see. There is a bigger picture where you kind of have to like step outside yourself for a minute and realize like how important family is and make those inten intentional times to spend time with your family. Like spend time with your grandparents. Make time for your parents. Make time for the cousins that you haven't seen in a while. Make time for your friends. Like I think that happens over time where you just have a disconnect with people because you don't realize that like making time for people in your life is important. Because when we're when we're like if we have that privilege to be 70 80 90 years old because it is a privilege to live that long i think i'm gonna society. be like 100 too i feel like i'm gonna be 100 as well yeah yeah we're gonna be old as shit <laughs> still doing the podcast <laughs> you're the fuck right <laughs> back in my day i was just talking about grandparents no, no great, but great grandparents so my point is like when you're those ages, mm -hmm. you tend to really reflect on your mm -hmm. life and the people that mean the most to you. It's not about how much money you've made or like all the, the physical shit, materialistic shit that don't matter. It's like, well, what are the experiences you had with people and how did these people make you feel when you were around them? And um, that's one of the things that my grandma has like instilled in me is like make time for the people who are important to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably why I value friendship in that way, because when I do get to be like 80, 90 years old, like that's the stuff that you start to reflect mm -hmm. on. And coming off of the holidays, it just reminds me of kind of the conversation we were having with, with Isaiah about, you know, giving back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sh my grandfather was that guy. Every every Christmas, he would make the kids a candy bag. Mm -hmm. um, he would buy like holiday nuts and holiday fruits and all these different things. And I used to be like, like, why do you why do you do that? Like, even if you don't have the money for it, he would find a way every single year to make sure every single kid in my family has a Christmas candy bag. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? He's like, because you know that's what they did for me. Um, I just want to pass that down. I just want this to be something that. My my grandfather and my father was able to do this for me, and mm -hmm. I want you to be able to do this for the next generation. And Jada and, and so forth and so forth. That's dope. Um, so do it's you like, do that now? Like, I don't because <clears throat> it's still his thing. Okay. Um, I don't want to be morbid here, but eventually he's not going to be here. So when he isn't, I feel like that's something that I want to continue. Mm -hmm. Like when we talked about tradition and different things like that, it's like you want to hold on to what you're used to. And, you know, that's why we need. <clears throat> Damn, I'm getting choked you up. You're getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to 
drink some water. <laughs> I've been drinking water the whole time. <laughs> no, but like it's it's understandable. This is a mm-hmm. safe space. So yeah. no, I, I get what you mean. But just to change topics here because mm-hmm. it is getting, getting it's getting very sensitive. Um, I wanna just flip the script a little bit and talking about being beyond the bullshit. Mm-hmm. Now Tell us why. Obviously you guys know that is my Instagram name. Mm-hmm. And that's been my Instagram name since I created it back in 2013, I believe, when I first created Instagram. And at the time, it was just how I was feeling in that moment. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, like, I, I think it was more so to do with, like, the guys I was dealing with at the time. And even till this day, like... They still on the bullshit. They on the bullshit. And I think that's why I created Beyond the Bullshit because I've always been one of those people. Like, I was very... In college, I was a very, like, no-nonsense kind of person. Mm -hmm. Not even just from, like, a relationship's point of view. It was just, like, people. Like, if I didn't like the energy you was giving me or, like, something just wasn't aligning with what I needed in that moment, I I was big on ghosting. So to go back to that conversation we had with Isaiah with the last episode, like ghosting was like my middle name. So that's also where it is Marie. (laughs) 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 But back then it was ghosting. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's where the the Instagram name came about. Mm -hmm. So um, what I want to get into though is like, how do you do it now that I'm almost thirty? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's still my Instagram name. Like, I ha- I've never changed my Instagram since I've created it, and I've thought about doing it. But at this point, I'm like almost ten years in. I am I think ten we need years to copyright in. Copyright it at this point. Yeah, it's ten years in. So like, I'm not changing it. Mm-hmm. But um, from a more mature point of view, and like being a woman of almost a new decade in my life like I just want to talk about like what it means to me now so it still means like a no-nonsense kind of person but it's more so getting to understand like why people are the way they are and like still not taking shit from people Mm -hmm. but still being like more um giving people more grace Mm -hmm than usual and how I was back then. Like, I'll give you a chance to explain yourself, you know, like whatever the case may be, or even with a job, like my current job, I am more open to, especially today, like I had a conversation with my manager and like shit is going well. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. But it's it's this way because I was beyond the bullshit. Like Mm -hmm. I was a no nonsense kind of person. I didn't just take what people gave me. So that actually reminds me of that, a video that went viral of Coach Stormy and her low vibrational plate, <laughs> um, yeah. and not taking I had high what they give you. Plates for Thanksgiving, so. Yeah, but like that's that's basically the concept. Mm-hmm. It's like don't just take what they give you. Like pick and choose what you want, and then you know take whatever you can from that, which is beneficial mm-hmm. to you. So that's what it means. To me. So would you say in the evolution of Dana, your personality traits are similarly evolving? Right. Because you know how like most people, when they they typically evolve, it's like, oh, I went from an immature person to a mature person. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I matured my bullshit detector. Like now I don't take this kind of bullshit that, you know, beforehand I Mm might have ignored or something like that. But no, I'm truly not being bothered with the bullshit. I think now I am speaking my mind more Mm -hmm. and not just like I'm talking about from a corporate point of view. I'm not just talking about dating. But I am just being more outspoken and asking questions of why are things a certain way? Because one of the things that um, I have come to realization, especially with like um, any type of like work meetings and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. whenever they say, does anyone have any questions? If there's like some type of new change with management or like the applications that we use, I'm now stepping up and speaking up because the thing with my coworkers that I've always experienced, and I'm talking about real life coworkers, not y'all that are watching. Because we like y'all. Yes, but my real life coworkers is I've always been that person, regardless of any type of level when I was working in corporate, that people confide in. Like mm-hmm. they would always tell me their issues with the job and like tell me why they didn't like the manager or why they didn't um they weren't happy with their pay or whatever the case may be. Like I was that person that people confided in. So being that that was the case, 
I think now it's like, well, let me be that voice of my coworkers. Mm-hmm. Like, let me ask these questions that I know they're going to come to me and complain about. Mm-hmm. Like, let me just see, like, okay, you're not in that space or you don't have the confidence in yourself to ask the question, so I'm going to be that for you. So that that's, like, where I'm at when it comes to, like, not being. I know we talked about it before where your progression at your current space You weren't looking to be like a manager or anything like that. You would probably want to go even further beyond that. But it sounds like the people that work with you will probably like that, that they would probably seek that out. I don't think she wants that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But seriously, because you have that sense of I don't want to diminish what you do as a middleman of sorts. But, like, you are the person that I can bounce things off of, mm-hmm. and you're going to get solutions. Like, I'm a very big solutions-oriented Me manager. Me, too. I'm like, a I do person not, in general. Yeah, like, I, I'm a I don't, I don't like for people to, hey, Aaron, I need to do something. What should I do? Okay, I don't know. Let me ask X, Y, Z. I hate that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate being put in positions where that is required of me because I would rather just give you the solution, right? And it sounds like that's what you are embarking on in the future. <sighs> Yeah, it might be my calling, and I feel like I'm just trying to avoid it at all costs, but it was actually a conversation I had today Mm -hmm. with one of my managers was they were trying to understand everyone at the company's strengths and weaknesses. And one of the strengths that he mentioned is that, like, I am a people person. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how much I try to um, avoid it, I I, I know (laughs) that. Like, I, I know, like, I know, like, different aspects of myself like I know myself in and out like I just always knew that like people people gravitate towards me regardless if I like it or not and I think um the reason why I try to deflect is because it does take a lot of my energy Mm -hmm. like when I get to talking to people even from like a dating perspective like people tell me like their deepest darkest secrets and I guess it's possibly like how comfortable they feel with me or the questions that I ask but either way it's like I find out some shit that I'm like yeah this is this is a lot and then they start to just like pour into me and Mm -hmm. just pour their emotions and to me it kind of feels like they're taking my energy from me and that's exhausting Mm -hmm. so I think that's why I tend to like be alone and those like after those things happen to where I'm like recharging. Yeah, well so. that's the, the the beauty and the curse of an empath. And uh, I believe that's what you believe in annoying. that you are. Yeah, and apparently my manager realized that as well. And he was like, Yeah, we wanna get you on a space where like you are in a higher position because like we understand that like people like you. Like you mm-hmm. are a people person regardless of oh. how much you try to like I, I walk around with a bitch face on purpose. At the end of the day, if you gonna talk that talk, what the bag looking like? Like I don't, okay. I, I ain't got time for all of that shit. I'm beyond the bullshit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So then I want to ask you uh-huh. then, like from your point of view, like what does that mean? And do you feel like you have different things in your life where like you are a no nonsense kind of mm-hmm. person and beyond the bullshit? And like what exactly do you take yeah. from that? And I think that's where we sort of kind of differ because I I still take in. A lot of the bullshit mm. because I try to filter it out like I try to see the best in everybody I try to give everyone a chance um, whether it's at work or whether it's at home or whether it's in relationships or friendships like I, I believe everyone has the opportunity to to <laughs> be beyond the bullshit right um, where <laughs> Can it's we like get a ding for that? <laughs> where <laughs> where it's like <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, like, I get that everybody has their flaws and everyone has the ability to be worked through. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I have this this one kid at, at my job, and granted, I believe he might have some mental deficiency. So I try to give him a little bit of just, you know, just a little some bit of rope, leeway. right? Okay. Because it's like maybe he really doesn't understand. And the problem is, at first, he was doing so well. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you do good. It's like, okay, come on, I got you. I'm going to bring you he? on. He might, he? Be, he might be in his early 20s, teens, I don't know. Um, but then he's just steadily regressing. And it's like, I don't have the patience or the energy for this Do you this have shit. conversations with him? I, I try to now because at first I was short. Like, one thing about me is I, I give people a lot of room. But once he, like, lost me, I got short. Mm-hmm. And I got to the point where it's like, I'm getting mean. 
Mm. And I felt bad because the woman I work with, she was like, Aaron, that's not your personality. I know that he's not doing it the way that you want him to, but you know that he has a bit of a deficiency. Okay. Um, I need you to be a little bit more fair. Mm. And it's give like, him some grace. Yeah, it's like you, you hear that after like, yo, I'm done with this shit. Like I'm done trying to give everyone all of this, this leeway when the pressure's on me. So then let me ask you this. Do you feel like because there is a lot of pressure on you and because you're dealing with so many different personalities mm-hmm. being the manager that – he, he, you know for a fact that he does have some type of like mental mm-hmm. deficiency. You're not giving him the amount of patience because you're just dealing with so mm-hmm. many other people. At at the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. But then once I realized, and I had that conversation with with the woman who, who really put perspective in me, and that's why as a manager, it's not just about being right or wrong. Sometimes you have to listen to the people that you work with. Um, a lot of a lot of managers just have this sense of arrogance, like mm-hmm. it's my way or the highway. And it's like, nah, that's why I can't just be be beyond a lot of people's bullshit sometimes because I got to I got to listen. Like, I got to yeah. listen to how you feel um, perspectives. I might be wrong. I might not know everything. And I like I like managers mm-hmm. like that. Like, I like managers that are open to hearing what people below them or people that mm-hmm. they're managing have to say, because. We live in a different time, mm-hmm. number one. And these like, kids are different. <laughs> very different. Gen Z is different. But, like, just from my my job's perspective, like, my boss always talks about how a couple years ago, because my job is a is a um, European-based company, and a couple years ago he was saying how it was literally just all, like, middle-aged old white men mm-hmm. running this company. And... He felt like he was more so an outsider. Mind you, he has, like, he's a tall white man with blue eyes. Like, the typical, like, corporate CEO look, Mm -hmm. right? But he felt like an outcast because, like, he didn't fit the picture of what the company has always looked like. Mm -hmm. So now, and he even said, like, there was, there's literally, like, no women in higher positions. So now there's women in higher positions. Like, we have diversity. We have um, black people that are, like... Um, directors and stuff like that like it's very diverse now but it's because he kind of had to like push through those barriers and have those conversations and like kind of open their eyes to see like hey there's different ways of getting to the same goal and Mm -hmm. accomplishing the same thing without having like such a structured traditional way of doing things and with my current manager it's like He's very stern on, like, everything that we do, we have to be in the office. And because of 2020, where we were on lockdown Mm -hmm. and a lot of people were dying and we realized, like, how important it was to make time for your family and for your friends and to live and not just to to work work to live. Yeah, a lot that put a lot of things in perspective to people where if your job said like okay we're not doing remote anymore we're transitioning to come into the office more a lot of people quit their jobs because they realized they were able to spend more time with their children and family and still get their work done without being in an office so things are different now and it's it's okay and like things can still get accomplished without being in a Mm -hmm. box and being in that like standard traditional way of going into a job Mm. i like the box though I don't like the box because I'm so much more than that. And when I'm in my my cubicle, it's not a little cubicle, but when I'm in my cubicle, (laughs) I just feel so confined to where it's like I'm I'm forcing myself into a mold that I know I'm just so fluid in not fitting in. So um, one of the conversations I had today with my boss or whatever was basically explaining that. And saying that, like, hey, I have this, this, and this that, like, I'm doing, but I'm still eager and, like, I want to accelerate in this company, where however that looks, but... Without being a manager, because you don't want to do that. I don't want to be a manager, <laughs> right. I feel like they're pushing me to be a fucking manager, though. I'm not going to lie. Anyway, if it's more pay, I'm with it, but we'll see. But anyway, um, like I was saying in previous podcast episodes, it's like I do so much in my in my in my own space. And that's one of the things that like older generations I feel like don't really understand because 
they they haven't experienced that up until 2020 when we realized it's possible it's like they were so stuck in this box of like mm-hmm. things have to be done this way you're going to retire at this job and that's just your life and then you're going to like travel or whatever but our generation the millennials we're showing them that like you can make a lot of money on the internet or however whatever endeavors you have like real estate or whatever the case may be still do your job and then some and you can retire whenever you're able to just like cover your expenses of your living like you don't have to wait till you're 65 like you could do this shit now and i think a lot of a lot of it is the internet like that visibility mm-hmm. um because while traveling has always been a thing for a lot of people seeing it it's like, yo, hold on, time out. That's a reality. Yeah. Like, um, I'm going to give a shout out to my sis, Brittany. Um, she just went on like a solo trip to Aruba. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for whatever reason, I ain't getting all into her, her business. Her and Caleb went to school together, too. Um, she just was living. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn. I love that. I want to live. Like, yeah. I want to be on Aruba on a private beach with a flamingo just because I fucking want to. Traveling gives you that right? that opportunity but to see different things. You got so many people that's stuck in these dead-end jobs. And it's not dead-end just because of the money. It's sometimes dead-end because of the time It's spent. mental, too. Yeah. Like, they, like, they pr- literally program you to, like, this is your day-to-day. This, this is your what PTO. you have to do for, <laughs> for, like, to be successful. Like, you have to do this and that's it. So I think now mm-hmm. we're living in a time where they call it the entrepreneurial era, mm-hmm. where like people are breaking away from the traditions of a basic like corporate job mm-hmm. to where like they're figuring out figuring out different ways to make money to live and like experience different co- cultures and travel with their family. So like I applaud that. I Absolutely. think it's dope. And then one thing about <laughs> one thing about my current job is we have this odd as PTO structure. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, can't go to um, vacation when another manager's on vacation and another manager's on vacation. Plus, you got blacked out dates for holidays. So, it's like, you need to schedule your vacations a year in advance. And it's yeah. like, first off, the type of person that I am, I don't do that. You're spontaneous. Yeah, I'm a very spontaneous person. Like, me and Dana, we looking to go to Miami in June. Maybe, we looking to go to Jamaica in March. Right. My birthday coming up. So, it's like. That don't mean I just want to just shout out to the Pisces, <laughs> but that that don't mean I just want to just put weeks up. Like I I might not do it. I might do it, but somebody else might do it, so now I can't go. Like I don't yeah. like that. I I don't like that concept where it's like sometimes I just want to get up and go. And these jobs they get you so stuck. Right, and that's some of the bullshit that I'm beyond. Like yeah, we're beyond that bullshit. I'm done being stuck, constricted, <laughs> confined yeah. to this little ass box. We even done with the chicken. What more cute. do you want from me? <laughs> but um, <laughs> it is one least. thing that I do want to talk about is that we are getting older. Mm-hmm. We and, got time for one more thing. And that's honestly, I know we want to go to Jamaica in March. And Miami. No, in I'm going to Jamaica. In March. Okay, I said we for a reason because I'm washed. Like, wash is a mindset. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. Like, okay, your back might crack a little bit and your knees might, you know, but to me, it's a mindset thing. Like, if you literally wake up every day thinking you're old and washed and like you don't have. You don't have anything to like, not look forward to, but you just feel like you're old as dirt. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Like, because you ain't old yet. We have to teach I'm about you to be 30 lesson, next year. You know how you said about to be? Next year, I'm excited. Uh, good, good. You should be. Um, eventually, you gonna wake up, and it's gonna be like 8 p.m. And I know you like to take your naps already, so you might be, you know, readily prepared for this shit. But the me that I used to be, 8 p.m. is up time. I, I'm ready to run. I'm ready to rip and see the streets. Man, I am ready for bed. Like, I can agree. Because um, I'm, I'm like that, but as long as you take your nap prior to going out, you good. Yeah, but when I'm on vacation... I'm sleeping. It's a reason that rest and relaxation is a thing for vacations these days. Like, I might take a whole day and just sleep. I'm one of those people where I have an itinerary. I'm I'm the same way. I'm an itinerary. I'm not wasting time on vacation. Like, we're doing this, this, this. We're seeing shit. We're eating, Mm -hmm. exploring, Mm -hmm. ATVs, um, parasailing. We're We're doing it all. I learned how to vacation on a cruise. So cruises literally have something to do for every hour of the day. So it's like, oh, this I like that. I mm-hmm. like having structure. Okay. Um, the good part about a cruise is you can break it up. 
right? So we can do the little scavenger hunt. I at thought 8 about o'clock. doing a cruise, but because I kind of want to have like a set destination mm-hmm. for us to like mm-hmm. take our if time. If you go to Bermuda, they have set cruises. We're the, doing um, Matigo Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be on that raft where like, you know, bitches take pictures on TikTok. <laughs> We're like they're on the raft and they're just like cruising down this little uh like lake or whatever. No. It's like it's like a bamboo raft and then there's like a, a Jamaican guy with like a bamboo stick. Mm-hmm. You ever seen them pictures? Like in Stella got a groove back. I don't remember that. But it's mm-hmm. all over TikTok. Either way, I'm gonna be that person and just take them. You know our algorithms pictures. are different, right? Of course. My algorithm ain't got sexy Jamaican niggas with no shirt on just Rolling girls down the damn. It's river. not just girls. There'll be guys on nah, it too. I only got. Nice. But um, nonetheless, like I'm excited for my birthday. Mm-hmm. Excited for 2023, and just the things we got coming down the pipeline. Absolutely, because you know we've been we've been talking to some folks. We've been so consistent. Mm-hmm. We gotta have a live show. We gotta have. A, Is it too soon? Uh, can, will y'all? I don't know. Will y'all let us know if y'all want to come and visit us on a live show? What's the what's the Instagram again? The We Outside After Work pod? It's just or We Outside it? After Work. Okay, because that's TikTok. So I'm getting them confused. I don't know. You run a TikTok. Yeah. So we definitely want to do a live show. And we want yes. y'all to actively engage with us. Let me know if I'm talking some bullshit or if y'all beyond that. <laughs> they you know? tell you when you're talking bullshit. First off, I don't care. You know, yeah. I, I love the engagement. I love the disagreement. Discord is the way of life these days. Um, all of the conversations that we see on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff is we about don't disagreement. Got a, we don't got a Facebook, though. No, we don't have a Facebook. I don't want us to have a Facebook. Why? Wow, because it's for wash people. No, because I spend enough time doing the YouTube and the Instagram and mm-hmm. learning those algorithms. So, like, Facebook, I just, my mental capacity just can't. So, all right. Well, we're going to wrap up this episode here, guys. If you are interested in joining the conversation or coming on to promote your business, definitely email us at WOAWpod. See, she was ready. She, y'all heard her, right? Because <laughs> it was a lot of pressure. WOAWpod at gmail.com. And if you hit up WAOW at gmail.com, it'll probably flag you. So then you can go ahead and hit us up at the right. Shut up. Anyway. But with that being said, are we, we outside, outside and, and we, we out. out. We got a theme song.